Hey everybody, welcome. I'm here, I'm Galen Ferguson and I'm with Helena Simpson. We are going to talk to you about what is Clubhouse. I feel like I'm so late to the game, but the app is still in beta and it's still new. I think uh, so Halima will have to tell me, I think it's only about 100,000 people. And just before Thanksgiving, it was like around 30,000 people on the app. And it's only like 100,000 people on the app right now. So it's still new, um, still in beta, and it is invite only. So I put, what is this secret invite only app? <laughs> but it's not too much secret. I was being facetious, but um, a lot of people still have not heard of Clubhouse. I am literally three or four days new onto the app. I'm loving it. It feels <laughs> almost addictive. I thought I couldn't get more addicted to the app than TikTok until I found out about Clubhouse. So there's some things that I wish that I had known before I started. There's some things that I want you to know if you decide to join the app. It's so beneficial if you are in business. It's great if you're not an entrepreneur or business owner. It's a good social app as well. It is a social media app. It is a live group audio social platform. It's not meant for business. I just happen to be an entrepreneur and I'm using it to network. Um, but you can have fun on there. You can talk to different people. It's all types of stuff on there, all types of rooms on there. I just happen to go into rooms that are talking about business or marketing. Um, but last night I hosted the my room for the first time. I hosted a room for the first time and um, woo, I felt like I got stuck. Halima came to my rescue. I felt like I was trapped in my own room. Halima, you have to tell them how I was like, how do I get out of here? Right. <laughs> my intention was to go on Clubhouse and say, hey, maybe I can be the category king of sales funnels or category queen, category queen of sales funnels by going in there and hosting a room talking about sales funnels and marketing automation because I had been in other rooms and they were talking about marketing automation. They were talking about systems for their businesses, but nobody was talking about sales funnels. So I said, let me create a room in Clubhouse and talk about sales funnels. And I'm just gonna go in here for about 30 minutes talk to a couple people, let people know what I do, who I am. Three and a half hours later, I started texting Halima and said, how do I get out of this room? <laughs> how do I end this right. room? I'm trapped in my own room. People just kept coming and coming, raising their hands to get on stage. And Halima's going to talk about what is a stage, what it means to raise your hand, all everything you need to know about Clubhouse. If you have any questions about Clubhouse, please do not hesitate. Put something in the chat. We are live streaming on Facebook and YouTube right now. So please leave a comment and we will answer any questions that you have about Clubhouse. I can tell you one thing I know for sure that it's iPhone only right now. It's still in beta. So for all my team Android, Android users, I'm so sorry. But you need an iPhone, and not only do you need an iPhone, make sure you have iOS 13 or later, because I think right now we're on iOS 14. But if you have iOS 13 or later, you can definitely have the Clubhouse app. Sorry, Team Android. But Halima, can you please give us like a rundown, really quick rundown of Clubhouse, and then we're going to just go question by question. How does that sound? We're good. We're good. Okay. Awesome. So one of the first things that you did for me when I got on Clubhouse was that you welcomed me. You started a welcome room. And that is a feature that Clubhouse offers that I did not know about. But I know it was like late at night. Someone uh, sent me an invite. As a matter of fact, I was in a Facebook group and they were doing one by one like the invite train because you only get one invite when you first started. So 
in the thread of the comments, if I joined, I would give my next invite to someone else, but somebody else beat them, beat me to it. So as soon as I joined Clubhouse, I was invited to a welcome Galen room. I didn't know anything about it. Somebody pinged me in the room and it was Halima and another colleague of mine, Kathy, and it was a welcome room. So that's the first thing you do. Helena, when you have a friend join Clubhouse, you send them a welcome. Can you talk about that? Okay, yes. Yeah. So as Gaylon explained, the club is actually it's only in iPhone users now. And there's etiquette and pros that you should follow within the app. And one of them would be like if you're connected with someone and they're inviting you, first you need to make sure you know who this person is because you want to make sure that you're getting invited by the right person because there's a place where you could actually get invited by the wrong person because of the things that they're into because club high clubhouse follows and connects you to people who are interested in the same things that you're interested in so like for me if i'm getting brought in by someone that works in the music industry everything that they do most of the time is going to be about music so because they're actually interested in the music industry, entertainment industry, what ends up happening is everything that they're doing on Clubhouse, I will get a ping to tell me that they're in a room. However, what they're interested in may not be what I'm interested in. So you have to understand that when you're getting a welcome, uh, excuse me, an invite from someone on Clubhouse, you really want to make sure you know who they are. You don't want to just accept Clubhouses from anyone. Um, one reason why is because there are some people selling invitations and sell selling invitations is actually against the rules and the guidelines of the platform. You are supposed to get an invitation only until they introduce, you know, the new way to join the club. So they really want you to get invited by someone that you know, either personally or in business, because you're basically vetting that person. That person is vetting you when they invite you to the platform. So that's the number one key thing. You have to make sure you be very careful on who you allow to invite you into the clubhouse. And you need to know who that person is, OK, because you can end up getting kicked out of the clubhouse. So people can get kicked out of the clubhouse for things that are not following when they're not following the guidelines and rules. And the responsibility of you inviting someone is just as Galen stated, you're supposed to get a welcome. OK, you're supposed to get a welcome on Clubhouse from the person who invited you. I feel like I'm so close on this. I'm going to try to pull myself back a little bit because my head is like right in there and I got a big head. So, um, so you want to do a welcome for that person because you really need to do a walkthrough of how Clubhouse works. So when a person joins the Clubhouse, uh, Galen, I saw that Galen had gotten on the platform. I have Galen's number. You have to have a relationship with this person. So I have Galen's personal phone number. Galen has my personal phone number. We have each other's phone number saved in our phone. If that person doesn't have your number and you don't have theirs and you use that number to come on Clubhouse, you're not going to get an invitation from them unless they actually text you one. Um, is the only other way you can get it. But because Galen came on the platform and her number's in my phone, it populated as, hey, Galen just joined the clubhouse. Would you like to welcome her and follow her? So that's what I did. When I saw her, I went into a group. I saw another person there who actually invited her and I introduced myself to her. We spoke. She was brand new to the platform as, as well. So we had an opportunity. I had an opportunity to actually do an introduction to the platform to Galen plus the person who referred her. OK, so inside this platform, there are actual functions you can do. This is a different platform, okay? This is a speaking platform. So you wouldn't go live like how we are now. You don't see anyone live um, face. As you can see here, there's a, um, a little box there that has our profile pictures. You're talking behind your profile picture. It's definitely a more intimate setting and you get to really hear people because a lot of times you can see if a person is really, if they know what they're talking about or if they're just diving you just because you're able to speak. So now you have social media with Instagram and Facebook and the other platforms where you are able to hide behind a post or a pre-recorded video, but you can't really talk to that person unless they do go live. Well, in this platform, it doesn't exist. You have to speak. The platform is meant for you to speak. You will not get invites unless you're active on the app. What does that mean? When you come onto the platform, someone does a welcome party for you. When they do the welcome party for you, what ends up happening is you're looking at how a welcome party would look on Clubhouse. The only thing is, here you see Galen, she started a room on the Clubhouse. So instead of the room showing sales funnel strategies, networking, um, what is it, automation, or make it marketing automation, I'm sorry, 
I'm not seeing that from here too big. I'm on my phone. Um, it would say, welcome party for Galen. And then what will happen is when we're in the platform, it was just the three of us in the platform. And I literally did a walkthrough of the back office, of, of the back side of, of the platform. This is how you actually start a room on the platform. Um, you can start a room on the platform and talk about your particular uh, industry and what you want to discuss. Or if you just want to talk about, you know, something fun or something that's going on, you know, world news or something, you can talk about that as well. It's your choice. You have the opportunity to actually click a button and instead of going live, you actually click a button in this platform and say start a room. When you start your rooms, you should actually make sure you do a title with the room as well. Okay, so you have the option to start a room with conversations. Now, you also have the option to join rooms and actually join in a conversation as an audience member, or you can be a speaker, okay? The picture that Galen just had a, a minute ago, that was actually the stage of her room. So everyone that you saw in that picture, on that particular picture, this is the room right here. So let's just step back. When I mentioned start a room, these are actually rooms and conversations. And you see the green button? That's how you would select start a room, okay? So that's how Galen started her room on the platform to share her expertise with other people who are interested in creating funnels. And that's how you could do the same thing for whatever topic you want. Um, as mentioned, it is a platform that you can use for business and for networking. I'm also a, a business owner, so I do do a combination of both. I actually do my business and I also have fun on the app because there's a lot of things going on in the app. Um, I, I played um, Black Card Revoked um, the first night I joined on the app. It was interactive. Um, you have the ability to change your profile picture. So your profile picture would kind of like be your response card and they give you directions on how to play the game beforehand. So it's a really cool app. The other thing is you have an option to build your bio on the app. When you're building your bio on the app, it's actually a way for people to find you. And so when you're coming onto the platform before you start, you do need to make sure you create a, a actual bio that's gonna have keywords in it so that people, when they're looking for you, because there's a search function on the app, they can actually find you. So even though you may be a subject matter expert or various things, you can also highlight other areas in your bio to say you're also interested in this and you're also interested in this. We're talking sales funnels, we're on here with Galen. We can also mention that if you have a sales funnel and you want to put the link in there for it, or you know, you can put the link in your bio too. Um, I don't put my email address in there unless it's something temporary where I'm on the actual platform. It's not up there 24 seven, but I do have all three of my websites on my bio, okay? And as you can see on the bio, if you look at the first three uh, lines on the bio, that's usually what people will see when they just go say, oh, let me look who, see who Galen is. So if you're a specialist or, or you have a, a industry that you work in, you need to make sure those first three lines are actually put in your bio because people have to expand the, the bio to see your full profile. So you wanna catch their attention on those first three rows, okay? So that's very important as well because we are actually on here getting clients. We're actually connecting with other people to assist us with our businesses. Um, I've actually even gotten opportunities to be a contributor to a magazine. There are a lot of different things you can do on this app. This app is not for you to play on. You have to understand that in the app, in the room, if we could go back to the room. Okay. If you take it back to the room, they would be great. Okay. Like the rooms on there, that would be great. We're going to go back to the room, and I think we just have a screenshot for now but she's gonna put the picture of the room up. When you're in the room, which they call the hallway, the hallway has all the rooms that are going on, okay? In the room, all right? So right now we're back on the stage inside of a room. Gail, could you take us back to the actual room where you can see the other discussions that are going on? Okay. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Hold on. One second, guys. This is really key and important because you will get an invitation from people you don't know and then you just left hanging and then you come in and you don't know the proper rules, the, the follow and the guidelines here on the platform. So in this room, you will see all type of conversations. And I'm talking about extreme off the chain conversations. You got to be careful. Do not pop in any room 
that's going to come back and bite you in your butt. The reason why I'm saying that is because there are people on here saying how to get a sugar daddy, uh, why women cheat. I mean, the topics are so offbeat of what we do. But if you're on here for networking purposes, everyone that follows you, if you go into any of those rooms, they're going to see that you went in the room. Because every time Galen goes in a room, I get a notification. Galen is in this room. Every time I go in a room, she gets a notification that I'm in a room. So if you're trying to connect with those people who have reach to assist you in your business professionally, you've got to be mindful about those rooms and where you're going, okay? Because it follows you. So do not go in those rooms when you know you shouldn't be in there, okay? Just don't do it. I stay away from those rooms. If you want to get in those rooms, go get you a whole nother cell phone, whole number name, picture, use your middle name, do whatever. But don't let the business owners know that you're in those rooms because they may change their mind about doing business with you just because of their own personal views. Not to say that people don't do it. Just be mindful when you're on here so that you won't end up in a space where you're getting kicked out the club or you're in a space where someone can screenshot and say, oh, yeah, she was in this room. I got a screenshot with her picture. So they can actually screenshot you in the picture to show that you're in the room, okay? Another thing that you cannot do inside of the um, clubhouse is you're not allowed to record conversations in the clubhouse. It is not allowed because you do not have consent to do so. So do not go in clubhouse thinking, oh, I had this whole conversation, I'm going to remarket it, or I'm going to put it on YouTube and I'm going to get all this engagement. Don't do it because it's not allowed. The people in Clubhouse are not consenting for you to record their conversations, okay? And if you were to record the conversations, you would literally every two to three minutes have to have something playing saying that this call is being recorded or this session is being recorded to let them know every single time so that people say, I don't wanna talk about, you know, I'm giving tips and tricks in Clubhouse on how to, you know, promote your business or to scale up. I'm doing it in Clubhouse with this group of people. It's not for the whole world, okay? So just be mindful of that when you come on side of Clubhouse. But um, I'm going to stop and pause and see if Galen want to ask me any more questions. And I think we have someone else trying in as well. So go ahead, Galen. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so for me, I can say that I had an incredible experience last night. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the intention was to just come on and talk for about 30 minutes about sales funnels. And one of the things that you mentioned to me that I forgot in the moment was to be careful who you make as a moderator. So can you go into about being a moderator of your own room and be, being careful of who you're allowed to be a moderator, because I can tell you my own personal experience. I did not know the person, but she had so much incredible value to add what I was doing, but she ended up kind of almost taking over the room. And my intention was to establish myself as someone who, you know, is in the niche in the market and industry of marketing automation and sales funnel and me allowing this person to be a moderator literally every person had an answer a question she had an answer and that could probably potentially have taken away my expertise credibility clout whatever you call it as the host of that room so can you go into more about why it's important to be careful and how to vet the people that you want to make a moderator okay so, um, yeah, so when you're in the platform, there's a rule of thumb when you give people the badge of being a moderator. One of the things is when you're a moderator, you have control over the room. The first person that opens up a room to have a discussion is the head moderator. And they need to really stay in that space until the end, because as I mentioned, you get credit for being social on the platform. So when you start a room, you are automatically the moderator, excuse me, moderator, and you can assign other moderators. So what happens is, this is the thing, you shouldn't have any more, um, no more than two to three moderators, yourself and another person. When you're getting someone to be the moderator, you wanna make sure it's someone that's working with you. That moderator is actually someone who can actually scan the room, look at profiles, to make sure that the person coming on stage, if it is an open discussion and you, are starting the room, you should be the one that's being edified. You should be getting the, credi the credibility for this actual room being started. So make sure you scan the room to make sure when people are asking to come on the stage, 
you have control over who you allow on the stage. There's a button on the app. It's, it's a, a picture of a hand. You tap it and the actual moderator will see that someone raised their hand to speak. And you can actually allow them to speak by selecting allowing them to come on the stage. Then they have to also accept coming on the stage to speak. Before you let them come on that stage, you want to make sure you look at their profile to make sure this person is not in your same position and you're trying to pour into the people and give them key information to help them build their portfolio, their business, and this person's coming on acting like they're the subject matter expert. So you have to make sure you monitor that, okay? There's a time and a place for that when you come together as a group of people who work in the same industry, then you all can be the subject matter expert. Um, experts on the moderator list, okay? But don't allow people to come in that way because what happens is you're not able, you're not allowed to control the room and that person can really discredit you because every time someone asks a question, you start at the room. It's your topic of discussion. This person comes, comes in, you don't know who they are, and all of a sudden, every time you give information, they come behind and top the information and they look like they have more credibility, credibility than you. So you want to control it because it's your stage. So control your stage is your space. That's really one important thing I want to say. You'll have all kind of people coming in trying to tap in. And it's okay if you as a moderator that started the room or the person that you spoke with to assist you with doing the room, it's okay if you say, okay, we want to make sure that we address everyone that has a question. Even if there's not anyone asking a question and their hands aren't raised, you don't know who hands are up because you're not a moderator. Only the moderators see who asks, who wants to come up and ask a question, okay? So you can control that. So you can, you know, politely say, okay, we have more people in the room, you know, putting their hand up to ask a question. So I don't want to go too much in detail with that because I want to make sure we, you know, come back around and ask everyone the questions. Because people will try to come and take over your room and it'll be their discussion and not yours. So you have to be very careful when you're doing that. Okay, I'm pulling this up now because it shows the schedule, how you can literally schedule um, in advance when you want to start a room. And the reason I want to bring this up and show what it looks like to show rooms that are already scheduled is because one of the things that you can have is a clubhouse. So Halima, can you tell us the difference between starting a room and starting a clubhouse? I'm thinking a clubhouse will be very similar to like a Facebook group. So um, can you tell us the difference between starting the room and starting a clubhouse and um, the reason for scheduling? From what I understood is that um, if you want to join a clubhouse, they're kind of back in queue. They have uh, like thousands of people who already applied to start a clubhouse. But if you can go ahead and start hosting rooms ahead of time, um, by the time they get to your application, then you will more than likely get approved, but you want to be able to start getting a habit of doing at least three weekly rooms um, or three rooms, or hosting three rooms three times before you get approved while you're waiting to get approved. So can you talk a little bit more about that and scheduling your rooms and the difference between the room and the clubhouse? Okay, so starting a room is just you engaging in conversation with other people on whatever subject you want to talk about. And you get credit for that because you're actually using the platform the way they want you to use it. And so you can do what's called, it's called a club. You can start a club on Clubhouse. So if you, whatever club you want to start, it could be on something just, it could be on plant-based diets. It could be on your particular industry, any title that you want. And you want to make sure that your title is catchy so people would want to do it. And you want to have an actual uh, short bio as to what the club is about, who it's for, as well as some people say, follow me on Clubhouse to get inside my club. And some people... It looks like we lost uh, Halima. Um, as soon as she comes back into the room, we'll go back into it. But I'll keep 
going um, until she gets back in the room. So as far as what Halima was saying, if you if you see the screenshot, this is a screenshot of a schedule of rooms that people are starting. So you see there's a film club form, there's a room for optimizing your website for Google, there's a room called Cyber Mentor Mondays, choosing a career path. So again, one of the advantages of having your room scheduled is so that people can already um, have it planned ahead of time of when they can join your room. They can kind of put it on their schedule, on their calendar to join you when you get ready to um, start your room. So that's the advantage of scheduling it ahead of time. So it looks like Halima is back with us. Uh, you want to keep going, Halima? Yeah, that's fine. It kicked me out. I don't know why I did that. I just, I just went blank. Um, so what you want to do is you want to prepare your Clubhouse application. The website you do it on, I believe, is Clubhouse Organization. Was it? I texted it to you, Gail. Is it clubhouseorganization.com? Mm -hmm. Let me look it up. You want to do the application beforehand. And when you do the application, as I mentioned, it's clubhouseguide.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Clubhouse Guide is the website where you can actually see the guidelines for the, the clubhouse rules and everything. You can also apply for a club. When you're applying for a club, it is going to take you a minute to get approved. I do uh, advise that before you apply for a club that you actually stay active. Some people actually are coming in, jumping in, doing a club. Um, application day one. Some people are getting approved really quick. Some people put an application in. One person, she put an application in, she said a few times, and they denied her three times, and she came in the club after me. I've only been in a, um, in a clubhouse for, it'll be two weeks on tomorrow that I've been on the clubhouse, and she just got on, I believe, three days ago, and she applied, and she got, she said she was denied three times. So the process mm -hmm. that they're going through to vet people to be, to start a club, I'm not sure. Um, but I do know that your interaction on the platform, your delivery and your speech and how you're, you know, just just your whole demeanor on the club is going to determine, um, especially if you're active. So don't come in talking a whole bunch of foolishness because the founders and people are going through and they just pop up. You don't know who they are. You can actually end up unfollowing the founder of Clubhouse. So you make sure you read who you're who you're actually following, because when you come on the platform, you're actually going to get some followers that you can say that you want to follow. They give you like a few followers just so you can see what's in the room. So the rooms aren't blank for you. Okay. So the clubs are really good because it allows you to talk to target people. So your target audience actually can come to the clubhouse and they literally can see it. And when you get on the stage and you talk to people, you can literally tell them, okay, I'm starting a club on this topic or on, in this industry and please make sure you follow me. So like for me, when I'm on the clubhouse, I let them know, hey, I'm Halima, um, I'm a business success coach, and I'm also a credit instructor and credit financial consultant, and follow me because I put in an application um, to do a club, and it's coming, and I let them know what's coming. So then they see I've already been on stage, I've already shared a whole bunch of information with them that's strategies and feasible things that they can actually do. So now I've kind of, you know, gotten credibility. So now they're going to follow me and they're going to look out for the club. When the club is approved, I'll put the club in my bio to say, make sure you follow my club for more free strategies and tips on, you know, this topic. So that's one reason why you want to make sure you do a club, because right now I'm not sure if they're going to put a cap on, club, on the clubs or what they're going to do, but definitely have that in place beforehand. So you'll be ready. So that bio is important to put on your, um, on your, um, your uh, bio section on your profile. And then that club application, making sure that you are able to only connect Twitter and the Instagram. Those are the only two platforms it connects with. So whatever Twitter account you use or whatever Instagram account you use needs to match your profile. Okay. So yeah. that has to match because they're going to look and see, okay, she says she does this, but her IG page says something different. So make sure you have the right ones on there. So those are some preliminary things you can do before you. Okay, great. So um, before I ask any more questions, I want to know, Darren, do you have any questions about Clubhouse? Um, he's very new to it, just like me. Um, I'm okay, only Darren, a couple of days. Oh, yeah. Darren, um, hey, wrote um, one of the speaker. yeah. <laughs> I bought one of his, his I, I bought some. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a breakup, man. Did you? Oh, Halima, hello. Well, we definitely we need to talk, man. First of all, thank you for this information. Galen's the one who hit me up on this, and she was telling me a lot of people in the 
music industry went on there. It was Jay-Z birthday. And I was like, oh, wow, that's great. I'm sorry I missed it. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't up on uh club but somebody reminded me Galen, of of someone actually kind of mentioning it mentioning it in uh june money out the other because you always hear something about a social media it's like yeah okay whatever you know but um sounds like it's really kicking really well um there was a breakup when when you were explaining one part that i would love to hear again when you're talking to me said look at and look at them and make sure that you know they're okay in other words your word i use is jacking making sure they don't come in and jack your conversation like okay. you was talking about with someone else who's coming in and just take over so how do you how do you deal with that how do you deal with you know without just being rude or anything without being rude and uh, what's the best way? What's the best way to to deal with that? Well, you want to make sure, like when you're speaking, you know, in any situation, you have your guidelines and you have your key points, so that you just control the room and just say, you know, I don't want us to get off topic here because I want people to stay on topic with this, and we'll close it out. And I'm also was going to speak to Galen and a few other peoples in regards to seeing if there was some way. This is just for me because I like structure. That's the project manager in me. Um, I was going to look and see if it was a way for people to actually submit questions. Like if I put a, uh, a form online where they can submit questions and then I can just get the questions read back to me. Mm. So I don't have to worry about, I can just get the questions and, you know, I can go do a job form a Google doc or something and just let them add questions in. And then I could just go through the questions and answering them for the end. At the end, we will leave Q and A at the end of, you know, the session. We'll leave a little small time up for Q&A, just like we do with any other platform, a Q&A session at the end to keep the room flowing. And that's just the easier way to do it. And we may or may not hit everyone's topics because we are only on here for an allowed amount of time because you're scheduling this time. So that's one of the things that I do when I'm speaking. And I actually moderate and host with a lot of other people. So I'm the, they call me the sheriff. So, <laughs> but um that's okay. the way that you can okay. really stay on, you know, on beat and people won't feel offended by it. It's your room and you have some key points. If you let someone come in and interject and you have to let them know, you know, briefly you get, you know, this many minutes to go on and ask your question or make a statement. Um, then we have to go to the next person just so that we can get enough people um, the opportunity to ask a question or, you know, reply. Just be polite about it. No one's going to be, they're not going to, mostly everyone on there is mostly, you know, that, that, they have some form of, you know, business that they do. So they're not going to feel offended by it. That's um, good to know. I didn't know about the whole creating a form where people can ask questions and you get to them like one by one. Because even someone who's just ask, asking a question or raising their hand to ask the question and come on the stage, they could also be trying to use that time to get that clout as well instead of really genuinely asking a question um, for the moderator. They could be trying to get you know, that time and take up that space. So I like that idea. That was a good idea, Halima, of having some type of job form. So you mentioned that you have someone to moderate with you. You have a partner because yeah, I was in the room by myself. So it's good to make sure you have somebody you know and trust who can facilitate that form and get those questions to you or just have control over the room so you can focus on getting, getting out that content, audio content. Um, and here's the key thing about that. Remember, they don't see your face. So I'm typing, I'm telling Gaylon my connection is bad for some reason. I'm texting her on, on, on Messenger. And but when, when you're on an app, they only see your face or the picture. They see the picture. They don't see you. So you can multitask. So you literally can be on Clubhouse talking to them and you literally can just say, I'm going to put this job form. You can put it on your link tree or whatever platform you use. And at the top of the link tree, you can say Clubhouse Q&A's, you know, Clubhouse, put your questions here. Guys, look at my bio, follow my Instagram, or my Twitter. There's the link for you to actually put your questions in. We're going to have a Q&A session at the end, 15 minutes. And then that way, not only that, it allows you to find out what is it that your audience needs. So you can take that information and then use it again and repurpose it. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So that's just a good way to do it. And plus, you're, you're allowing yourself to control the room. So, so awesome. are you... 
who use it, generate any kind of leads? Are you dropping any websites seeing How do you do it in a way where you're not looking salesy or just oh, okay. over promotion or something? Have you, Alina, in any way to do in that matter? Well, there are some things that we already do for free. You know, under our agency, we do some things for free already. So we're just literally mm -hmm. making it. So any freebie that we have, we can speak on. So freebies that we have, when people consult with me for various things, and they, when you do a consultation with me, you are literally getting some value and things you can move with that day, regardless if you hire me or not to be your coach. Okay? Because that's okay. just what I do. Um, so mm -hmm. they have already spoken and did a discovery call mm -hmm. with me for free. Then they booked a consultation where they actually paid. And each time they're talking to me, mm -hmm. I'm pouring into them. So you have to make sure you're giving them something that's of value that they don't know. And, you know, that's the best way to do it. So with me, when, before you speak to me and you book, like you book an appointment with me, after you book your appointment with me, I use SurveyMonkey and I ask you questions. And before our session, you can't book me same day. You got to book me at least two days in advance, right? That allows me to go and do all my research and see what you need. So when I'm coming to have that conversation with you, I already have already done a whole lot of research about what you need, where your business is or whatever. So I'm coming in a conversation with information already because I'm asking you then on the call, but I've done the homework before I actually had the call with them. So that's how I kind of learn what to give away for free. I kind of just, I give stuff away free already that people pay for. And I just think some things you just shouldn't pay for in my area because I'm in the financial industry. So I just think a lot of things you need to share with people because they lack mm -hmm. knowledge. So when you drop a knowledge on them in my industry, they're like, this. just things they just need to know that they don't know before they even move into, I want to do an investment or I want to do this. You need to know okay. fundamentals first before you move forward. So that's, that's just kind of like an example, like for me, for my industry. Okay, awesome. Um, Halima, I want to talk about this uh, screenshot right here. Mm -hmm. So um, can you explain, because I got this notification and I just gave Desiree a whole full government name, but I'm sure she won't mind because she is a coach. But I got this notification that I could add her. And I was confused because I was thinking I only had one invitation and I had already given out my invitation. So I just want to know, like, how does that work? Um, okay. You know, it said I could invite her, but only had, I had already given, my, given out my invitation. So if right. I invite somebody um, that way, based off that notification, do I lose my invite? In this situation, you would not lose your invite. Um, I would like for anyone that sees that, if you know that person personally, go ahead and you can let them in because when you do that, it says you will not lose credit when you invite them because they're on the wait list. So if you have a relationship with people and they end up coming on the platform, you all have each other's personal numbers, then that's another way that people can get invited is because you can actually take them off the wait list. I've actually had this happen a few times and I didn't take people off the wait list because one, I didn't know who they were. Then someone ended up, I didn't, I'm like, I don't know this person. I have like so many contacts, but it wasn't someone that was in my immediate circle. So I didn't let them in or some people I saw them However, I've seen them on social media and I didn't agree with some of the things they said or, you know, they may have been, you know, just extreme when it comes to social media. And I didn't want to be connected and tied with that person because when you let them in, you're tied to them. So you definitely need to know these people that you're letting in on the clubhouse for that very reason. You let her in as soon as she lets her in. As you can see, or you can press ignore. As soon as you let them in, what will happen is Clubhouse says, would you like to do a welcome party for her? So if you let them in, what I usually do, if that means that they just populated in the system, which means they're on their phone, they're in the app. I usually call that person and text that person, hey, you're on Clubhouse. That happened to me with a, a person I know. She was on Clubhouse and I said, hey, you're on Clubhouse. Um, later on this week, let's go ahead and do your welcome. And she said, okay, cool, great. And she said, yeah, I, I am on the app. I had to verify the last name because people's names be different sometimes or they have extensions to their names, right? I verified who she was, sent her a text message, and I said, this week, we're going to do a walkthrough on Clubhouse for you. So that's how you would do that. That's another way you can bypass it. Now, sometimes people may not give you their real number, and you think they're coming here and they use a different number or they'll use a different name. Clubhouse wants you to use your real name. You're branding yourself, even though you have the business, but you also have to remember that you're still branding yourself. So your name needs to be known, not just your business name, both of them, because 
you are the business as well. So just be mindful of that. You can get in Clubhouse that way. Um, but sometimes I've had people who've done that and I'll tell them I don't have any invitations yet or I've ran out of invitations. When well, in the beginning, I didn't have any but the one. Then I ended up getting three more. And then I don't know if they're going to give me more after I give out the last one that I have now because I've gotten four so far in the, you know. Oh, we lost her again. <laughs> So, um, well, I just want to um, bring Chris up and I'm glad you came in, Chris, because I want to introduce everybody to Chris. Chris is like the new, new guy, like new social media, new tech, new everything. When you want to know what's new in technology, the internet, the online world, I found out about Clubhouse from Chris. I found out about Amazon Live from Chris. Uh, <laughs> anything you want to find out about that's new and hot and, and streaming and, and <laughs> trending, hit up Chris. So um, we're going to bring Helena back in. But Chris, can you tell us some tips as well about um, what you know? Because I know for you, you are in the Amazon live space. You know, um, in marketing, we talk about the category king. So I, I would love to be the category queen of sales funnels or, or uh, live events. But Chris, when it comes to Amazon live, you are the category king and you put me on. So um, I saw that you had a room talking about Amazon Live and everybody was like, what? <laughs> In Clubhouse, people were like, what, what, what is Amazon Live? What is that? You can go live on Amazon? Like, and so because there was no one else on Clubhouse talking about Amazon Live, like that's your expertise, that's your clout, that's your credibility. So that's one of the benefits of being on um, Clubhouse and really claiming your space in the industry, in the market on a specific platform such as Clubhouse because nobody else from the time I've been on there was talking about Amazon Live and growing a following and getting brand deals and making money using the platform of Amazon. And once you got on there, people were like, are you serious? I know y'all had <laughs> a lot of questions being asked. So can you talk about some of that, you know, establishing your credibility and expertise on that platform? I can't, can't. <laughs> And sorry about that. I'm in New York, so the, I don't know what's going on. The internet be acting crazy out here. So, oh my God! So we are in. I'm right outside Atlanta. You're in New York. Darren's in Chicago. Chris, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Where are you, Chris? <laughs> this microphone. Um, yeah. So honestly, that was our first time doing a live, and the biggest thing that we talked about is um, being a producer, not a consumer, mm -hmm. on on any social media platform. Yeah. So, like you said, nobody else was talking about Amazon Live. Like, I do other stuff. I do digital marketing and sales funnels, but I don't want to talk about that because there was already a bunch of people talking about that. And the, the big draw was, let me put up something that nobody, I bet you nobody else in here has heard about. And they'll just go, hmm, let me go see. And, you know, that's exactly what it turned to was that. Um, so that was, I mean, that was very, very beneficial in that sense. Um, but that's why we're always looking for whatever the new the new platform is um, because part of it is we're talking about being able to teach people that. So using Clubhouse and being able to talk and I mean, we already live stream all the time. So it's nothing now to do it just audio without the video. Um, so that's been that's been a great, great experience. Yeah. And keyword that he said is audio people. So don't be afraid of using it. It's audio, no video. I remember my first time on it and Halima pinged me on and I'm like, oh, I got to get my hair done, <laughs> my makeup. Oh my God. I don't have the lights on. And um, I joined and I was like, okay, it's just my picture. It's just my voice, that's it. Okay, I can do this. I think it's one of the best apps for introverts like myself. <laughs> I'm not a talker. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm an introvert. I'm not Darren. Darren has that radio voice, like radio personality. <laughs> so that's why I told Darren about it because he, I thought that this app would be perfect for him because he has that radio personality, radio voice. And, but still without that, even if you are introvert and soft-spoken like myself, like it's a good app to kind of just 
get your feet wet and get a, a feel of what it's like to have a voice and authority in your industry without having to worry about, oh my God, I got to come on camera. Oh my God, I got to do my hair. I got to do my makeup. Oh, what outfit I'm going to wear. It is perfect for that. And if you have something that a lot of people are not talking about, i.e. Amazon Live, like there's nobody else teaching. I'm telling you, there's nobody else teaching Amazon Live other than Chris. Okay, so and he started a room and people like he kind of like broke the Internet on Clubhouse when it came to Amazon Live because nobody knew about it. Nobody knew that you can live stream on Amazon. Nobody knew you can make money outside of being affiliates. So if you thought that you had to have products to sell, you don't. It's actually easier to just talk about them than to host them and sell them and have them in the warehouse and inventory. You can make money just talking about them. And even more, you know what? Let me stop. That's Chris. Uh, expertise. You see how I'm just talking? Okay. That's what we were talking about earlier about moderators. Like, be careful about your moderators because you don't want them to, you know, steal your clout, take your space in the room. And Amazon Live is Chris Space, Sales Funnel, Live Events, that's my space, um, Halima, uh, Credit Repair, uh, Outsourcing, Project Management. What else you do, Halima? You know, I do. You know, I'm big on barter food. You know, I'm, I'm yes. all about the bartering. I know <laughs> bartering. I about the bartering. I'm talking about Yes, bartering. that's her it's space. Yes. Everything. Right. If you do um, any type of membership site, subscription um, type, Netflix type products and services, email marketing, tiny offer, tiny products, that's Darren's space. Like, don't let anybody claim your space. Get on this app and use your voice because I'm telling you, you'd be surprised. I bet, like, Chris is probably going to end up on TV and all kind of stuff because nobody else is out there talking about Amazon Live. Like, that's his space. And I'm, t I'm saying that because you need to hit him up. <laughs> Find him on Facebook, Instagram, and ask him, how do I get on Amazon Live? How do I get these brand deals? How do I get paid and work with big companies? You know, I'm trying to get, you know, Sharon and Karen and, and Felicia to let me coach them. But I don't have to, I can work with one brand and get paid the same amount of money. I'm trying to work with these solopreneurs and entrepreneurs. I can get the same amount of money with one big brand. And the way you can do that is with Amazon. So hit up Chris, <laughs> hit him up, hit up Halima if you need someone to outsource. Hit you up to give me Chris's info. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I will do a connection. <laughs> yes. Yes. But Chris, before we go, can you tell them I'll how? I'll let your boy, Chris. <laughs> Sorry, you said tell, tell them what? people how they can find you online. Uh, online everywhere. Uh, Chris P. Giles one, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm I'm everywhere that. Um, so if you find me on there, shoot me a message. We can talk about and it. And Darren, how can we find you on Facebook, Instagram? How can we find you online? Darren, look up. I've been online for you know years. So at this point, if you've Darren Monroe. Oh, you'll see me on uh, uh, Twitter. Instagram's been a little weird. I, I, I'm, I still, I have an Instagram, but I need to do some updates. I had a, other than that, we're good. Okay, so if you remember when Chris first came on, I said he was a new new for tech. So your audio is kind of choppy. Definitely hit up Chris. For that audio, that sound, the mic, he he'll get you straight. Halima, how can we find you online? At Makeover 360 Agency. Makeover 360 you... Agency. Yes. On Instagram, Facebook, everywhere, pretty much. Instagram, on Facebook. And then you all know I'm Halima on Facebook as well. But it's a Halima Pasha, which is also my real name. It's my middle name. For those people that disconnect with me in childhood, I had to put the first the middle name on there. So it's Halima <laughs> Pasha on, um, but it's me. It's real. I'm, it, that, it's my real name, guys. So <laughs> let me just go ahead and, and point that out. But yeah, I'm on Instagram and um, I barely use Instagram. I'm so bad. I'm all, I'm on Facebook all the time, as you know, Galen. So I'm moving into the Instagram space. I am also definitely on Clubhouse. So you'll see me all over on Clubhouse. 
Awesome. And for me, Clubhouse, you see my handle, underscore Galen. I don't know who the other Galen is out there that took my name, so I had to put the underscore up there. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Galen Ferguson. Um, thank you, everyone, for sharing this platform with me. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Halima. Find them online. I'm telling you, it will change your life. I mean, literally your wallet. So um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Good night.